Okay, so go ahead and get out your video notes and your nervous system part four notes. And here's your math question. Okay, so the problem says calculate the total water potential. One thing, just to, just to kind of give you a little heads up on the AP exam, there's going to be some math that you haven't seen in a long time, kind of like this. Look for keywords in the, in the problem. Calculate the what? Find it on your formula sheet. So whatever it says to calculate, see if you can find those words on your, on your formula sheet. Another thing, do you see how it says like it has units like 50 molarity or, and that's a temperature Look for problems, I mean formulas, look for formulas that have those units in them. That's how you're going to figure out which formula to use. Okay, so the two formulas on your formula sheet are the, the total water potential equals the solute potential plus the pressure potential. Okay, well the problem tells you that the water potential... That's what you're calculating. But it tells you that the pre I'm sorry, the pressure potential right here is zero. So this number is, is zero. So all you're looking for, the total pressure is equal to the solute pressure. Okay, well, the, your, your formula sheet also tells you that the solute potential is equal to negative I-C-R-T. Okay, so... Make sure you see that negative. A couple people in here messed up on that part. There, there's going to be a negative answer. Also, remember that all solutes have a negative pressure. So sol what that means is it sucks. It's, a, it's an internal suction. So solutes are desiring water. Okay, so if you work this, you're going to say negative... I CRT is equal to the pressure. Okay, let, let's talk about that. Okay, so that I is normally two, right? So sodium chloride is two, but it tells you on your formula sheet that sucrose is one. So it's going to be one times zero point zero five. That concentrate, the C stands for concentration. That's a molarity. So 0 0.05 times R, which is always 0 0.0831, times temperature, well, it's given 15 degrees, but it's got to be 15 plus 273, which I believe is 288. So, come on. Okay, so when you calculate all those things together, remember you're using a four-function calculator, so go ahead and add that and then, calc and then multiply it. Should have gotten negative 1.2 circled. Remember that you're bubbling this in like you would an address. So if you put 1.20, it's wrong. If you put positive 1.2 instead of negative 1.2, it's wrong. If the answers are only right and wrong. Um, and one math question is equivalent to one multiple choice question. So it's just like you bubbled in the wrong letter. You bumbled in the wrong numbers. Okay, the next part, are there any questions? Okay, the next part, it says if a red blood cell has a potential of negative 1.2, oh, we got to go back, of negative 1.2, what's it going to be if it's put into that same solution? Okay, so... If you look at your beaker and you have a red blood cell of negative 12 and you put it into a solution of negative 1.2, that means like there's negative 12 pull in and negative 1.2 pull outside. Well, which way is the water going to move? Who pulls harder, 12 or 1.2? 12. So water is going to move into the cell. Okay, well, um, so that right there eliminated B, C, and D. 
So the answer was A. But w which way does it say, look at the question again, and it says, the water will flow into the cell because the cell is hypertonic. Okay, so remember right now, water always flows from low solute, hypotonic, to high solute. Water always flows towards more solute. And hypertonic means more solute. So learn that if you've had forgotten it. Water always flows towards more solute. And the word more solute is hypertonic. So I told you to memorize for that first test. Water always moves from hypotonic to hypertonic. Or water always moves from low solute to high solute. Got it? Yes? Okay, look at this question. I just threw in some multiple choice questions today so you can kind of look at them. Okay, so this shows a picture. I'm going to have to draw on it a little bit. This shows a picture of a neuron with its dendrites out here. I'm going to pick another color. Okay, so here's the dendrites on the cell body. Okay, and here's the axon and the terminal. And those are your Schwann cells. Okay, so you're supposed to put these in order. The cell body is one. Dendrites are two. The axon is three. And then the Schwann cells are four. And then the, den the end of the axon, the terminal, is five. So you're supposed to put this in order. And you can't really see um, the numbers real good. So it's one, three, four, five, two, one, four, five. C is five, three, one, two. And D is two, one, three, five. So take a second and try to answer that one. Which, you should be able to eliminate two pretty quickly. Which ones can you get rid of? A yeah, A and C. So is it 2, 1, 4, 5 or 2, 1, 3, 5? How does, look at the question again. Sequence repre represents the conduction pathway through the motor neuron. Okay, raise your hand if you think it's B. Raise your hand if you think it's D. Raise your hand if you think it's B. Answer's B. So, because remember the, it actually jumps. It What's that hopping called? Um, saltatory. saltatory conduction. Good. Saltatory conduction. Okay, try this one. Propagation, Propagation is the signal moving. Like the, the, the nerve impulse traveling. But the way that it moves is software conduction. Okay, try this question. Okay, which two can we take off? What'd you say? Okay, C is not right. It will move faster. And D is not right. It says it will come more negatively charged. D was the one that I took off first. Is that what y'all did? Okay, remember when I told you it's like a jack-in-the-box. When the neuron goes, it's, it's all or nothing. It's not like it goes halfway and comes back. It's not like it goes slow if it doesn't get to threshold. No, if it, it's either all or nothing. Okay, so the faster one is out because it doesn't go slower or faster. And then where it says more negatively polarized, well, really, if you look at the graph, it actually goes positive, right? I did that wrong. Let me draw that again. If you look at, y'all know the graph we've That's looked at. Do what? This is talking about the, uh, like the signal, isn't it? Like the stimulus. Uh-huh, so... I don't really think it, like, had anything to do with it. Like, the membrane doesn't really change. 
the neuron membrane to become more negatively polarized? Yeah, oh, you're thinking the inside. It's not yeah, the cell membrane? Like thinking, like, that would be right because I don't oh, okay. Well, if, if it's talking about the inside of the cell, look at the, look at the graph. It doesn't go negative. It goes positive. It, so it doesn't go negative at all. It goes positive. But one thing is we never talked about what happens if it goes above 30 because it only goes to 30. 30 is as high as it goes. Like, we never said if it goes to positive 35, then this happens. No, it goes to 30, and then the action happens. So, um, now we're down to A or B. The strength of the, the neuron impulse to increase or the frequency. Which is it? A or B? What do you think? A is right. That's right. Okay, remember, okay, look at this. If you just, let's erase all this. Maybe. Okay, if you just barely feel something, that means there was probably just one action sent. So it would look like that. Okay, but if you felt something and it was, a, it was painful, like it was a sharp pain, it would look like this. I'm not very good at this, am I? Do y'all not remember when um, Mr. Anderson drew that on the video? He drew it in white up on the video. So, so here's what you want to know. Like intense pain is really just the frequency of the action potential. So if you just barely touch your arm, it's like one little action. But if something like a knife cuts your arm, it's like a bunch. Got it? Good. Okay, so looking at this picture, it shows you... Um, hyperpolarization, you should know that one already. Hyperpolarization right there. Okay, and then this is like normal. It got to threshold and went. But what happened right here? It never reached, it never reached that threshold, right? It never got to 55. So this is like something you didn't feel. So The sound was so far away you didn't hear it. Or your brain, the action didn't ever get to your brain because you didn't feel it. The neuron never depolarized. Okay, so go ahead... Um, Grab you a blue neuron, everybody. Grab you a neuron and a pack of neuron molecules. <laughs>